So these are the requirements for the program that we're going to pseudocode. I'm now speaking for the microphone. Go ahead and pause it and read it, and we're going to write pseudocode based on that. So file new, slam it on the side so I can get both things on the screen at the same time. Okay. I may as well put my name, date, and say what this is, pseudocode for furniture program. Now let's always start our pseudocode with a start. I'm gonna, we're going to kind of make this strip down. So we're not going to put both the print statements and the input. We're just going to do something like input chairs or number of chairs, num chairs, input num desks, input num tables. That's our input step. I'm just going to put a comment here that that's our input step. Now we're ready for our calculations. Calculations. So we're going to have these calculations. We're going to calculate the number of chairs, the, number, the cost of the chairs, the cost of the desk, the cost of the tables, the flat fee, and then we're going to finally write a total that's equal to all four of those things. Now, even though we're then just going to have to turn around and remove the word set when we turn this into Python, we're going to go ahead and use that just because our uh, texts have indicated that it's a good idea for pseudocode. So set the cost of the chairs equals to the num of the chairs times 50. Set the number of desks, excuse me, set the cost of the desks equal to the number of desks times 100. I'm absolutely sure you know what the next line is going to be. Set Tables, whoops, I keep doing that. Set the cost of the tables equal to the number of tables times 200. Now, are these variable names magic? Do I have to choose these? Do I have to always put num in front of these things and cost? No, that's just to make sense to me as I'm writing the program. You know, you could just do input x, y, z and set a, b, c, you know, that kind of stuff. But we want to make our programs readable. Then we need the cost of delivery. Set cost of delivery equal to a flat 75. We are just about done. What's the next thing we do now that we have all these costs? Yes, but there's one missing piece. We don't have a total yet. Total is easy to calculate, though. Set total equal to all four of those things put together. Cost of chairs. I'm going to go ahead and fill the whole screen now because I'm going to run off room, run out of room off the side. Cost of the chairs plus the cost of the desks plus the cost of the tables plus the cost of delivery. Alrighty. I know I type terribly fast, so I'm kind of listening to see when the keystrokes slow down. Output. We want to output 
the number of the chairs and cost of chairs. So instead of the word and, I'm just going to put comma. I'll put the number of desks and the cost of the desks. I'll put the number of tables, the cost of the tables. May as well even tell them delivery fee. Output cost of delivery. Not delivery. The only thing that makes long descriptive variable names like that slightly annoying is that you make typos. And then we want to output the total. And of course, we want to actually format this somewhat nicely so that we describe what they are seeing. So that we're not just printing out, you know, eight numbers, but they know that the first one is the number of chairs and the cost. All righty, I think that's pretty good pseudocode. We need to tack on the stop at the bottom. And when you have pseudocode, there's nothing wrong with just copying the whole shebang. You could leave off this word start and pasting it into your actual program to use as a guideline. But for that to work, you'd have to comment all this stuff out. But I don't mind doing that. You don't have to do this, but it'll help me write it. I better save this so I don't lose it. CIT1113, furniture pseudocode. I'm just going to call it P code. All right, now it's time for our actual program. And why am I doing this so I don't have to split screen it? So I want to put comments in front of everything. Let's see if there's something under format which comments the entire stuff. There is. Check it out. If you highlight everything, you know, with your mouse or with Control A, Command A for the Mac users, and then you hit Format Comment, there, presto. Perfect. Now I can write a program, and I will interweave my code with these comments. Does that make sense? That's just a guideline. It gives me the, uh, the lines that I'm going to color within, so to speak. So again, I'm going to need my, need my name, the date, and the description, furniture cost calculator. All right, the input step. We need to input those three things. I think I've mentioned that there's two ways you could ask for input. Here's one way, and you don't have to type this. You know. This is just an example. Print name equals, and then do input, or name is equal to input, right? You can do that. Don't type this, because I, we're not caring about name. Or you could just do name is equal to input, enter name. It's up to you what you like better. The only difference is that this one leaves it, the cursor on the same line, while if you do this, the uh, split thing where you print and then do the input, then the uh, input needs to go on the line underneath it. But I'm going to go with that because it's a little bit more concise. But don't let that confuse you. If you don't like that, use print statements along with the input statements. Break them up. So number of chairs is equal to input how many chairs. Now, if I was making this for a real customer, I would make better prompts. You know, I'd tell them that this was the furniture program and the, that we were filling in the details of the order, how much it costs per chair, you know, that kind of thing. Now, we could gather all three of these pieces of information and then convert them to floats, or we can convert them to floats as we go along. 
And that's what we have done in the past, so I'm just going to continue that trend. Number of chairs is equal to float number of chairs. One problem that I've seen people have in these kind of programs is that they will copy and paste, which is totally cool. Don't do what I'm about to do. They'll do, okay, num disks is equal to, and then they'll fill in this, yeah, how many disks? You know, yeah, I'm saving a lot of time. Number of disks, and then they forget to change that one, you know. We don't want the number of disks equaling the number of chairs. So just be careful. If you're going to copy paste, that's totally cool, but uh, make sure you get it right. The number of desks is equal to the input. And while we're getting input, dear Python, please ask for how many desks. You know, we could convert these to ints under the assumption that they're not going to be ordering 3.2 chairs or 7.8 desks, but floats are good. I tend to stick with floats so that if somebody types in a decimal point, it doesn't crash. Then we need to convert that to a float. Number of desks is equal to float. How many desks? Nope, nope, nope. What am I doing? Number of desks. Go ahead and do the third one. If you already have, great. If you haven't, go ahead and do the third one, and then uh, about 45 seconds, I'll do it too. And by third one, of course, I mean the number of tables. So my last few statements were num underscore tables equals input, quote, how many tables? And then num tables is equal to float num tables. And I guarantee that when I walk around, there's always a couple of people who've left off of parentheses. No biggie, I'll help you spot it. But when you do that, it highlights that line as being the error. And then you get frustrated. You go, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that line. Well, yeah, that's because the problem is actually in the line above it, and it didn't bother to tell you that. Okay, there's something I want to demonstrate to you that I don't actually want you to make this change unless you just get thrilled and think it's awesome. We could, I mean, it could happen. We could do this. Ask for the number of chairs, ask for the number of desks, ask for the number of tables, and then do our three conversions. You think that looks better? Go for it. If you like that pattern that we've been following of asking for the input and then immediately converting, that's also totally cool. I can't think of an advantage of one over the other. All right, we've done all this input. I'm going to delete this pseudocode because it's kind of just cluttering up space at this point. All right, now we have these calculations. These calculations are already expressed in a formula form. Honestly, all we're going to have to do is take the word set off them, and we're already done. Now, it could be that you don't have the pseudocode typed in, and so if I just copy and paste them and remove the word set, I'm going to get too far ahead of you. So I'm going to type them in for you. But honestly, if you have them already typed in, just do this. Copy, paste, delete everything like that. One, two, three three, four, boom, we're done. But I can't guarantee that all of you did the pseudocode like that, so I'm going to go ahead and type it. But I'm going to type it in myself. Not read it aloud. Or maybe I'll mutter it aloud. Cost of chairs 
equals number of chairs times 50. Cost of desks equals the number of desks times 100. Cost of tables is equal to the number of tables times 200. And the cost of delivery is equal to 75. Unless you have Amazon Prime in which shipping's free. I was about to go boldly forth into the output step like you suggested, but I forgot. Oh yeah, we got to get the total as well. Total is equal to cost of chairs plus cost of desks plus cost of tables plus cost of delivery. All right. Here by decree, I'm going to say from now on, I don't care if you use the word set in your pseudocode or not. You leave it off. I'm not going to count anything off. Just know that if you were going to turn in pseudocode to the uh, pseudocode company, Inc., <laughs> they'd want to see the word you set. The wrong. I did. Delivery. Deliberbury. Elmer Fudd said it or something. All right, now we're ready for the output. Are we? Or is somebody still typing? I don't want to rock, rock it too fast. I don't hear any keystrokes. All righty, the output. I'm going to scroll down, though. That's the real reason I was asking. I guess I could type it above it. I'll do that. All righty, so the output section... Output, nope, there, there is no word output. Print. The number of chairs, followed by a comma, followed by the word chairs, equals dollar sign. And you wouldn't have to format this exactly the way I'm formatting it. And later on, we'll learn better ways. The cost of the chairs. So what did I do? I wanted to say three chairs equals $150. That's why I set it up like that. We haven't done a lot of printing where the very first thing we did is the variable followed by the string. But you can string, no pun intended, as many of these things together as you want. Onward and upward, that's the number of chairs. How about the number of desks? Print num underscore desks, comma, quote, the word desks is equal to dollar sign, quote, comma, the cost of the desks. All right, you may have noticed that I'm putting way too much space on these things. That's a habit I have that you're free to absolutely discard, but if you're printing something, well, if you have a big sequence of statements that all look kind of similar, but they differ in some way, I found that it helps me to visually process it, just eyeballing it, if they're kind of lined up in columns. That's the only reason I did it like that all of the spaces between the commas and whatever are totally unnecessary. So the number of desks, what's next? Oh yeah, tables. Num underscore tables, comma, quote, the word tables equals dollar sign, quote, comma, and then the cost of the tables.
Oh, and Crystal, are you here? Who's Crystal? Yeah. Okay. Um, I can't meet today. I am so okay. sorry. I don't know if you're on campus on Thursdays. Then you're on campus next Monday. <laughs> okay. Wait. Yeah, Monday. Can we meet then? Yeah. All right. Sorry. All right. I've printed those three things out. What's the last thing to print? I could print the cost of the delivery, why not? Print delivery fee, quote, comma. That's not, yeah, and then cost underscore delivery. And then the total. On the next line, print. I didn't put a dollar sign there like I was on the other one, so I'm going to go back and edit that prior print and put a dollar sign. Also, didn't put an equal in front of it. I'm just being consistent. Total is equal to dollar sign, quote, comma, total. And then finally, just so that you could double click this program and then not have the output disappear when you were done, I'm going to add one more input statement at the bottom. This is totally optional since we're running it within idle. This says input, press enter to finish or to quit, whatever. And that's just so that if you double clicked on the script rather than open it within idle, then uh, most of y'all have already noticed that when you do that, it closes the window too quick for you to see any output. Alrighty, I'm going to test it, see if I have any typos. I almost always do, but y'all were helping me catch them as I typed them, which I appreciate. So, save this. I'm going to save it in my desktop folder or whatever as furniture.py. Then I'm going to run it and hope it works. How many chairs? I feel like ordering seven chairs. How many desks? One. How many tables? Two. All right, seven chairs. It'd be kind of neat if I printed the cost. Is it, I mean, that the cost per chair is equal to 350 One desk is equal to $100. Two tables is equal to $4.0. Here it's kind of silly to be saying 7.0 chairs and 1.0 desks and 2.0 tables. We'll learn how to format our data better later. If we had turned these into ints rather than floats with the int command, then they wouldn't be tacking on that point zero. But it doesn't really hurt right now. The delivery fee is 75. The other formatting that would be nice if is if, you know, we like seeing dollars and in cents expressed as two zeros, but like I said, we'll learn more about that. And then delivery fee is 75. The total is equal to that. I'm just going to assume it's correct. I'm not going to whip out a calculator. Press enter to quit. All right. I managed to squeak by without any typos, but I'm going to walk around and make sure that everybody else has two. Pointed questions trying to lead you to something, and it's okay if I don't. But are there any improvements that we can make to this program that would maybe make it easier for the next person to come along to make changes to it? Comments, comments are excellent. I, I managed to take out all the comments when I was deleting them. So I was, I'm kind of disappointed in myself. That's not what I'm fishing for. How about, I'm going to kind of broach two things at the same time. What if they needed to be able to change the cost of the items in a hurry, and they also wanted the output to display the cost per item? Right now, those are what are known as hard-coded into the program. They're magic numbers. If you just had 
these lines of code in front of you without really knowing what the rest of the program did, especially if these variable names were, were bad, x is equal to y times 50, you have no idea what 50 means, you have no idea what 100 means, you have no idea what 200 means. And if you were going to print the costs, you would have to do something like this. 500 chairs at 50 per chair equals, you know. And then when you wanted to change the cost of chairs, wood's gone up, Cedar's incredibly expensive and now it's supposed to cost 150 You change that. You also have to remember to go and change it there. What would be a better solution or at least a step in the right direction? Yeah, these costs really ought to be variables and they ought to be defined at the top of the program. Some languages have the idea of the word uh, of constants. You define all your constants up at the top of the program. Now, Python doesn't have constants, but we can still define these things. So up at the top, if I was going to do that, I would do cost per chair equals 50. Cost per desk equals 100. And cost per table equals 200. And down here, I would get rid of these magic numbers and replace them with our variables. Cost per chairs is equal to number of chairs times cost per chair. Now really, I'm introducing a lot of additional typing. And once we do this, there's going to be the likelihood of typos. Like I said, I'm not really saying that you have to do this but I do want you to get the idea. There we go. Now we can tell the user of our program, the employer, that um, if they need to change the costs, it's easy to do. And then we could improve it even further by making these costs like pulled from a file or something. You can be sure that when Amazon is calculating your total cost, they haven't hard-coded the price of Twilight you know, into it. Instead, it reads the price of Twilight from, you know, a database or whatever. They may want these costs, 15, 100, and 200, stored in a database or, you know, stored in an INI file that they can go and change without having to change the code. And if we do that, then it's easy to do because they're all defined in one place. If we wanted to print those values out, we could print them out down here while we were printing. I'm not going to modify the print statements. It's going to make them almost too complex, but uh, that's the idea. That's the last thing I wanted to talk about with the, uh, this particular program. All right, there's one more thing I want to do, which is if we go, oh, we're not going to have much time for this. If we go to think like a computer scientist, Go to our textbook. We're only going to have 10 minutes to do this. I don't know about this. We have kind of been hip hop skipping around here. We have absolutely covered chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we, we did the idea of 6, and we've done some of 7, and we did some of 5, but we didn't go through them line by line. One of the last things in this chapter, chapter five about conditionals, is something pretty cool. Code for drawing a bar chart. So, if we had the time, I'd want to code this in. I wouldn't want to follow their code, that's boring, I'd want to make up our own. And then add the ability to put the text on the top. And then lastly, add the ability for it to be filled in. And really, I'd like even for these lines down here, you know, it, it's showing red and blue borders around it, but we could add that ourselves. Basically, we're going to be adding the whole thing ourselves. Why don't we stop? Let's talk about the homework assignment. Make a, uh, a drop box for what we've already done. So it'll be an in-class I called furniture. Is that the 
that's what we're going to turn this stuff into. If you have both your pseudocode and your Python code, upload them both. If for some reason you lost one of them or didn't finish one of them, that's okay. If you didn't finish either of them, that's okay, but you'll still get 100 on it. All right, and the homework is so similar to this that you're not going to have much problems with it by it. That's pretty much my thought. Let's go look at it. I have some typos here that I need to fix. All right, design a program that prompts a user for data about the A to, no wait, what? About a house to be built. Including the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, and the number of cars in a garage number of cars the garage holds. We're Jay Leno, we need a 200 car garage, we'll get one. And then we'll, we'll output the price of the home, which is a $50,000 base price. Now remember when we type these numbers in, we're going to leave the commas off, right? Plus 20,000 for each bedroom, plus 10,000 for each bathroom, plus 5,000 for each car the garage holds. So, along the way, print the totals, or you know, the subtotals. Oh, the bedroom costs, the bathroom costs, and the garage costs. as well as the total cost, just like we did. The base price, too. OK, that makes sense. That's pretty similar to what we just did in class. You don't have to do pseudocode if it helps you. Great. If you can't get the program done, if you're stuck on it, go ahead and turn in pseudocode, and you'll get half credit for it anyways. And then we can work on getting you the rest of the credit by working on the Python. Half credit for pseudocode, full credit for a program. Monday.